So I'm going to be talking about changes in motivation among newcomers in online communities. Many of the online platforms that we use today are ba based on notions of peer production. Uh, these platforms share several characteristics. They tend to be decentralized, self-organizing, free, and voluntary. And a key element is that they allow their participants to engage as they wish. Unlike in conventional organizations where tasks and responsibilities may be prescribed hierarchically, in the peer production context, people can choose to engage only in those tasks that they find most compelling. Now, despite this, most participants are either minimally engaged or drop out very soon after beginning to participate. Now, this inequality between the majority of participants who are minimally engaged and the minority who are responsible for most contributions uh, is characterized from different perspectives in various popular frameworks, some of which we've talked about today, uh, including uh, notions of core periphery of participation, the reader-to-leader -leader framework, um, the power law of participation, and the funnel of participation, among others. One explanation for this variation in participants' level of engagement is related to their motivation. And the link between motivation and consequential behavior has been studied extensively in the literature. So broadly speaking, we know that people who are more motivated to participate are more active, and people who are less motivated to participate are less active. So the logical conclusion is then that the majority of these participants who drop out very early on have experienced some decrease in motivation uh, over time, and in particular, very likely during the early informative period of engagement since so many of them drop out so soon after beginning to participate. But we have little empirical evidence for this conclusion in the peer production context and for newcomers in particular. A better understanding of participants' specific initial motivations and how they change over time may help to explain the dynamics of sustained and unsustained participation in online communities better than, than currently exists. Now, the prior research is largely limited by methodological factors. First, data are often collected from veteran user, users who self-select just by virtue of continuing to participate, and after, often after they've already been enculturated into a given online system or platform. So they don't really help us answer questions about initial motivations and early experiences. They also tend to use cross-sectional surveys to study motivation, and, and these studies do a great job of giving us a snapshot view of what motivation looks like at a particular point in time, but they don't necessarily give us insight on how motivations change as a function of time. So this study tries to fill this gap by targeting individuals at the earliest stage of engagement and measuring motivation at multiple points in time. We focus specifically on Wikipedia and Wikipedia editors, and we use a stratified sampling uh, technique to ensure that the distribution of engagement within our sample is representative of the distribution of engagement in the population at large. Um, so, so we really tried or made an effort to get data from people at various levels of activity and not just those highly active users who are more likely to respond to surveys. And, and we think this also gives us a much more accurate view of how motivation changes over a representative sample of the population. We began by monitoring the first two weeks of editing behavior for all newly created accounts during our recruitment intervals. Um, and, and at this point, we categorized them according to their level of engagement. We then sent these individuals um, our first survey, 206 people participated. After approximately six months, we sent them a second survey, and 99 participants responded to both surveys, which enabled a within-subjects analysis. We focused on five motivations that we saw, or we believed were prominent in the prior literature. Of course, it's not an exhaustive list. Um, and here, we've displayed an example item from each construct, and all but fun were two or three item measures. Collective motives represent the extent to which participants value the project goals. Self-expression motives represent the extent to which participants feel that their knowledge has made a contribution to Wikipedia. Social motives represent the extent to which participants value social intera interactions with other editors. Fun motives represent the extent to which participants feel that editing Wikipedia is enjoyable. And finally, norm-oriented motives, sometimes called social motives elsewhere in the literature, uh, represent the extent to which participants believe that their peers value their participation in Wikipedia. 
We use linear mixed effect models to analyze the relationship between time and motivation. For fixed effects, we entered the survey period. And for random effects, we added intercepts for each individual to account for um, the many unobserved differences um, be between, between our participants. And the dependent variable was the continuous um, level of motivation. So here we've um, plotted the means for each motivation from both survey one and survey two. The results of our analysis show that the collective self-expression and fun motives have decreased significantly as a function of time. So, so we interpret this to mean that the extent to which people value community values, they feel that their knowledge has made a difference on Wikipedia and believe that editing Wikipedia is fun goes down over time. On the other hand, we also observed that social motives increased marginally as a function of time. So the extent to which people valued social interactions with other editors has gone up over time. And there was no effect of time observed on norm-oriented motives. So given what we know from the prior research, these results provide a much more nuanced um, view of or understanding of editors' motivational paths, of newcomers' motivational paths uh, in the peer production context. So broadly, we find that different motives change in different ways, and these changes occur very early in the editor's career, within the first six months of participation, and possibly much earlier. Um, so if we think back to the average participant who's probably minimally engaged or has dropped out, I think our results show that it's insufficient to say that m their motivations kind of collectively or um, unmasked decrease over time. And so we have to look at specific types of motivation and how these change over time to really understand the differences between sustained versus unsustained behavior. So at a high level, I think this research highlights the importance of considering motivation in studies of online engagement. And I think that it really provides insights which can form the basins, basis of a much more nuanced theory of motivational dynamics in peer production systems. And finally, I, I hope that they serve the basis for uh, or that they inform the design of interventions that can be used to engage participants at the periphery in a more targeted manner by appealing to specific and relevant types of motivations. Um, and this is what we are attempting to do in our ongoing research. Um, the, these results have really set the stage for more complex research questions that combine behavior and motivation um, as a function of time in a, in a more explicit manner than we've presented here. Uh, so examples of some of the research questions that we think follow naturally from these results include how do motivation and activity interact over time? How do changes in motivation affect behavior and different types of behaviors? And what is the relationship between motives, motivations and emergent user roles? So these are some of the questions that we're tackling now, and I'm happy to discuss them more or answer any questions you may have. Hi, Ernest Wheeler, University of Michigan. I really liked your talk. Um, I was wondering if in like looking at the sort of five piece motivational roles, instead of just doing the averages of each, if you saw any sort of like common profiles or patterns where like there would be groups of people with high types of certain motivations and others and if they had similar outcomes. Yeah, you know, in the exploration of the data, we looked at some different clustering ways of clustering these different motivational profiles. Um, and, and we didn't go down that route partially because it's, um, you know, I, I'm not skilled at thinking about sort of motivational profiles. Um, but I think that would be a really interesting um, path to go down. And I think that could be extended to personality profiles. Um, I, I think it would be a great extension to this work. Um, thank you. Yep. Thank you very much. Hi, um, I'm Saif Savage from the National Autonomous University of Mexico. Great talk. Um, so from your study, it seemed very interesting that the long-term contributors didn't seem very motivated uh, to be enforcing uh, the community norms. Do you have insights about uh, why, uh, for instance, maybe it's, it is usually the long-term contributors who are helping to push, uh, for instance, the, the Wikipedia rules into the, into the newcomers, but yet they're expressing that this is not their main motivation, but for the newcomers, this did seem to be very important. I think, I think what our results show, rather, is that 
despite their efforts, perhaps the kind of veteran editors are, aren't as successful as they could be <laughs> in their attempts to kind of um, socialize participants uh, at the early stages of engagement. Um, I think one of the kind of powers of Wikipedia data is that you can really look at those processes from different perspectives. And we kind of chose to focus on um, characterizing editors according to their level, uh, according to their editing activity on the main article, like encyclopedia article. And I, I suspect that if you start looking and thinking about editors from their level of contribution in the talk spaces and their, their coordination activities, like a lot of these questions about socialization and social norms, I think, I think they'll come out and paint a really rich, interesting picture. Hi, Lauren Trevine, University of Minnesota. Uh, thank you for this study. Quick question, often when people study motivation, the next step is to say, well, now that we've learned something, let's use that to help enhance participation, maybe create interventions to make so the curve doesn't keep going down. So do you have any thoughts about that? What your study, study says about that? Yeah, yeah, actually, I do. <laughs> um, I think that one of the really cool results that we have is that despite the fact that we have a proportionally large part number of people who are minimally engaged in our sample, uh, like we really made an effort to do that, um, we have this increase in social motives. And I think that this suggests that perhaps building in um, social uh, mechanisms or mechanisms for meaningful social interactions in parallel or in place of kind of the main editing task for new editors may help to keep them engaged and sort of teach them how to participate in more core activities uh, over time. <laughs>